Hi. Let's do a mic check here. Last stream I did, the uh, Spotify was too loud. So we're gonna take it down just a little bit here. Let's see if we can balance it better. Because I noticed I couldn't hear some of what I was saying very clearly. Let's switch songs here so we get a louder song to make sure it's good. Try just a little bit louder. Spotify likes to lose its volume setting between launches, so it's always sort of a guessing game. That should be good. Okay. Seems good. Okay. Cool. Now. Sure, there are people better at this than I am who are able to do all this stuff without uh, having these problems. But I always feel like I gotta check everything. Get a, we're gonna get a duplicate, I'm okay. sorry. Oh, God. All right. There we go. Let's see. Just give me the chat for this, good Lord. Let's see. Just, there we go. Okay. I can't, everybody asks me, when I have the beard, everybody asks me why I have a beard, so that's usually a sign that I shouldn't have a beard, is if people keep saying, why do you have that every single time they see you, it's not a good sign. Um, all right, I've been talking about this for the last, like, four streams that I wanted to build this S60S board that I have, or PCB that I have, the Centrax 60 board um, in the Mechanisk Clipe clip uh, case with the, I think this came from Key Clack. This is a PBD coated brass plate and I wanted to do it with these hole tights. And I've been putting it off because I've never done a hole tight install before and I was afraid I would um, ruin the, not get them in. I tested one and it seemed fine. I also preemptively uh, band-aided. I'm gonna turn this light down a little bit. It's a little, a little hot in here. Let's turn this down. That's a little more reasonable, I think, especially with a white PCB. Um, so I took the time beforehand to do the Band-Aid modding on the PCB and lube the stabilizers. I'm also testing my stream deck here so that I'd... Genius. I have these buttons in a weird layout. So I no longer have to uh, look for the mouse and find the thing every time, so... Cool. Um, I did all that off stream because I keep saying I'm gonna do it off stream and then I keep doing it on stream and it's really boring work, especially getting the uh, paper backing off the band-aids once you cut them takes like 20 minutes and it's just such a waste of everybody's time to watch that. If you don't know how to do a band-aid mod in your, and you wanna do it for stabilizers, you could just look at any of the other streams I've done in the past because um, I started every single one of those with a band-aid mod. Um, it's just slow and same with lub lubing stabilizers. Um, in the good news department though, I got a replacement for the um, fancy screwdriver that I had last time. And last time I had the ES120 and it, I don't know if it was mine specifically, 
or if it was just a problem with the ES120, but when I turned mine to the right, it turned left, and when I turned it left, it turned right. Uh, so it was like lefty tighty righty loosey, which is insane, and I was using it like that because I had it, but I re ordered a replacement and I actually got the ES121, which was just the newer model of it. Um, it has a slightly different gyro, it's a little quieter. Um, and it goes the right way, which is great. And is super cool. Um, I really enjoy using it. So, uh, if you don't remember from last time, or if you didn't watch, it's it's an electric, uh, it's like a f open source screwdriver, whatever. You press a button, when you turn, it has a, a uh, what do they call it? gyroscope or whatever in there that can tell which way you're turning it. So you press a button and then you turn the direction you want to do it. And, and you can do it based on how much you turn it goes faster or slower, which is really neat. Um, it's expensive for what it is, but it's pretty neat. Uh, and it's really fun to use. I, I find it very um, satisfying to use. So we're going to put these stabilizers in. We're going to test them. And then we're gonna try hole tighting this PCB. Now the benefit of hole tighting is that it should go way faster than, um, come on, than uh, soldering. Because you just basically push one into each uh, pad and then that's it. And if this works correctly, it, this board would then be hot, swa hot swappable, which means I would be able to switch um, switches. Switch switches, which I've been wanting to have a good board that I could switch switches on because I don't have one. I got swindled in my very first group buy, actually, on Geekhack. Um, I bought a hot swappable board and the guy never shipped them. Well, he shipped 10 of them or something and then he disappeared. And um, so I got screwed there out of a couple hundred bucks. That was cool. That was a very fir good first, re uh, first one to, to be part of. But since then, uh, there hasn't been a good hot swap board. I haven't found one. And I bought a, I've talked about this before, but I bought the K-Type, uh, K-Type? The K-Type board from um, Input Club that was through Mastrop. And it has a hot swap board, but it's a terrible keyboard. I really dislike it. Um, so I want, have been wanting to make one for a while because a lot of different switch types come out and I want to test them, not just on like a test, um, you know, I have this, well, it's hard to get out right now, but I have that uh, acrylic board that's like a lubing station board and that's can be used for this, uh, for testing, but it's not the same as just typing on a keyboard for a while. And yes, open source screwdrivers. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty neat. So I guess you could go in and, I guess technically I could have gone in on the ES120 version that I had and I could have tweaked the firmware to reverse the the twist thing, but I actually think on the one that I bought, the gyroscope was installed backward or something because everything I looked at online all said, turn right, right, turn left, left. So I think it was just my actual ES120 that I got had been manufactured incorrectly, I don't know. Either way, I ended up with a 121, it was the same price. So, um, so let's put these stabilizers on and then uh, I'm gonna try to do two uh, pad, I'm gonna hold tight both pads on a, um, switch and try putting a switch in and taking it out because I'm a little nervous when I was reading about whole tech compatibility the Centrac uh, S60S which is what this is said it was fully compatible and people have had uh, luck doing it but I noticed when I was putting the whole tight in it's not a very tight fit until you push it all the way in and then it feels tight but I'm nervous that it's going to pop back out the minute I try to remove a uh, switch so we're gonna try it first and I, okay. Um, and just see how it goes. Scre electric screwdriver or not, putting the screws on a screw and stabilizer is still a pain. God, it's satisfying. It really is, it's, it's so stupid. It's it's very satisfying to use. Um, and I don't know why none of my screws are magnetic lately. I guess these gold plated ones aren't. Could have sworn they were, maybe I'm just, maybe I somehow demagnetized the Screwdriver bit here, I don't know what happened. All right, just make sure I did these correctly. Yeah, we're good. So I Band-Aid modded these, but I think my mistake was that I bought cheap, I bought cheap drugstore brand Band-Aids. And they're very thin. They're still the fabric type, but they're very thin. And I'm realizing they're actually not adding, not adding much padding to the hit there. So I saw the other day that, uh, 
I always forget the guy's username. Trombri, Twombri, the guy who designed Yuri, GMK Yuri, and other stuff. He posted, or I think it was him. Oh, maybe it was actually, no. No, maybe it was the guy, that, that might be a blots. No, I don't know. I think it was the guy who designed uh, Car Carbon, actually. Anyway, doesn't matter. He posted a um, thing to his Instagram saying that he had resolved all his stabilizer noise by using uh, a rubber glove hack where he, he bought like a like the kind of gloves you would do dishes with and he cut out a small square with a hole in the middle and he put that on the stabilizer and that resolved all the sound. So I'm very curious to give that a try. I just didn't happen to have that type of rubber gloves, rubber gloves in the house. But I do want to try that because by far the worst part of custom mechanical keyboards is the spacebar. Uh, a lot of people use MX black switches on the key on the spacebar because I guess they're very quiet. Um, I just never have any, so it's not an option. I guess I should just buy some to build enough keyboards. Um, but everything I've tried, like I have some keyboards where it's not quite as noticeable, but some it's pretty noticeable. So when we built that, we, when I, when I built that, um, what the hell's that called? Accent, uh, last stream, um, that space bar is very, very, very loud. And it's partially because, oh God, it's heavy keyboard. It's partially because there's a, a Telio in there right now. Um, but it's a, it's really noticeable. So part of what we're gonna do in, in the clip is put craft foam underneath the PCB because there's no backlighting. So I wanna kill all the sound, but also at some point I'm gonna try putting craft foam in the actual SA space bar to see if I can kill all that sound, but that's not really the actual problem there. Uh, I do have a magnetizer in one of my I can barely lift that thing one-handed. I actually do, yeah, that's a good point. I think I said this at one point. I have this, this guy, this random ass like hardware store kit that I bought years and years and years ago and then lost. So I ended up having, what the, there you go. It has a magnetized, demagnetized thing here. I've never used this before. Now I'm like all nervous. Anytime I see magnetize, I get nervous for some reason. Or demagnetize. Like I'm afraid I'm gonna accidentally put it next to a wallet or something. You know, you spend so much time avoiding, or I spent so much time in the 90s and 2000s avoiding getting credit cards demagnetized or whatever. That may have been a myth. Let's see. Whoops, geez. Let's try. Well, okay. I, I mean, it, it certainly felt like that did what it's claiming. Let's see what happens. I mean, it, the screws immediately magnetized to it. Let's see. Hmm. All right. Maybe maybe it's actually just the, the tip here that needs it. Hmm. Nah. <laughs> oh, that one kind of. I don't know. Maybe it's like. Maybe it's cheap. Cheap screws, cheap screw head. I don't know. Whoops. I don't know. What is this doing? How would something? I, I, I'll. Whoa. Okay. Well, these became magnetic. <laughs> That's okay. It's better. I actually, I'm realizing I have no idea whatsoever what that's doing. Is it? Is there just a magnet in there? Put the tip of the screwdriver in the hole and swirl it around the edge of the plastic. All right. Well, let's let's do this. Let's go all the way. Oh, I see. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, geez. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, that totally worked. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Is there just a magnet in here? I, I sound like a real. How do magnets work? Like, is there just a magnet in there? Is that all it takes to magnetize something? Is to put it near a magnet? That doesn't seem right. I don't know. I don't know anything about magnets. I'm realizing. I know that they exist and I know they work. And now this totally works. So thank you. <laughs> now I'm gonna go downstairs. Rub this all across all my credit cards. All right, let's put this on here. This one. Oh, that was totally worth it. That's so much better. Thank you. 
That's awesome. What else can I magnetize? Maybe I can magnetize my refrigerator door. Because we bought a new refrigerator a couple months ago. It's stainless steel, but it's not magnetic. And like, I don't know about you, but I, refrigerator doors are supposed to have magnets on them. You're supposed to put all your junk on there, right? Like bills you need to pay that you always forget about, pictures of your kids from four years ago, uh, a notice of a barbecue from three summers back that you didn't actually attend. Like the whole th front of a refrigerator is supposed to be covered in junk and use magnets for that. And so now we have this pristine thing that I can't, and I made all these magnets of our kids. Um, I like, I didn't make them, I ordered them from a place that makes them. Social Studio, I think is what it's called. And they're really awesome little two by two, two inch squared magnets and they're great, can't put them anywhere. So those are just like sitting in arbitrary places. And then you get the downside of the fact that stainless steel takes fingerprints instantly. Um, so we have to clean this thing 24 hours a day. That was another benefit is you cover it in, in junk and then, then there's no reason to clean it. All right, good, good, good. And let's just confirm that this all fits with this plate. It does. ISO. Get out of here, ISO. Who cares about you? All right, there we go. That's I really dislike that. I don't like universal ISO plates like this. I've noticed a trend lately where people aren't doing the universal ISO support, which I'm, I don't use ISO, so I don't care, and it makes me happy because I don't want to see the extra cutouts and stuff. All right, this is all set. And you know what I should do? I always forget to do until it's too late. Let's just test this PCB because I never actually plugged it in. Uh, and don't do the thing where I plug it into the computer I'm streaming from. Let's plug it into the, it's plugged into the Mac. Okay, there we go. Success. Okay, I've actually never had a Centrax 60 fail. I think I've used three of them. Pretty stable, so. Yeah, seriously, I, it was so disappointing to get that refrigerator and not be able to stick anything to it. We actually have a couple of other things in our house, in our kitchen that are stainless steel that also are not magnetic, so it was just, just frustrating. I, I At the time, I read something about why that's the case, and I guess actually stainless steel is not magnetic anyway, but that uh, to make it magnetic, they put magnetic metal behind, and the stainless steel is like a thin coat of stainless, or a thin piece of stainless steel, and then it's still magnetic through, I don't know. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if this works. So we're gonna just do one switch. I really should have a little. Of course I don't have like a little cup for these. Why would I be prepared? Is there nothing on my desk that could function? Yeah, here we go. We'll use this lens cap. That'll work. Our cables all over the place today. There we go. All right, now I have 150 of these. We should only need 130 of them, or whatever. And I, I have them for the, oh, bye. Goodbye forever, I'll never find that one. Oh, okay, I didn't go that far, jeez. These things are so small and so hard to grab, so I'm gonna have to use tweezers to get them into the right spot. And then I'm gonna use a um, the tip of the soldering iron to push it in. I've seen in the past people say you should use the soldering iron on, but on a low temperature. I don't think that's actually gonna be necessary because they do fit in fine, and I actually don't see in this case why heat would make a difference. Um, so I'm gonna try without that. I've got one in here. Let me just see if you can see this. It's gonna take a second to focus on that. So it's right, it's right there. You can see it's sticking up. And you basically just stick it through the, um, through the pad. God, this camera just does not wanna focus on the right thing. There it is. Um, you stick it through the pad and you push it in and then it should be tight enough that it stays even when you take switches in and out. So let's see. Cause I'm a little nervous that won't be the case just based on how loose it felt when it first went in. Uh, where did it go? Okay, this one here. So, do one switch. So yeah, it just goes like, goes right in. Then, I was just kind of pushing it in like that. And that's it. Like, there's not really anything else I can do. 
I could see... I could see the argument for heat maybe making this more pliable. So maybe it would be worth it. Um, but that's basically the gist of it. I'm just trying to decide how hard I need to push and does it need, I think it's certainly should be completely flush. This is like a hundredth of a millimeter sticking above the board. I don't know that this tip is the best for this. There we go, okay. All right, it's, I gotta push a little bit harder than I feel comfortable with to be honest. Okay, now let's see what happens if we put a switch in it. So I have some box navies, wrong camera. Box navies, uh, didn't use these before because somebody was saying that apparently box navies can get stuck. Uh, I still really like the way they feel. Um, so this is a perfect opportunity to test it because if they get stuck, hey, not a big deal, I'll take them out. Um, and I sort of want to try this only with the depth that it would be on a plate because I don't want to push it in too far what switch was that? Is it five? Tell the one, two, three, four, five. Is it six? Tell the one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So we're gonna put this in the six spot. Uh, is this gonna okay? I'll put it in the plate, and then attempt to put it into the hole tights. Wow, it went in with zero force whatsoever. Uh, so that's good, I guess. Let's see if it works. All right, let's see. I'm gonna need Google Translate on these, on the uh, comments. All right, let's see here. Whoops, I knocked over my Destiny Ghost. I've had this thing sitting on my desk since Destiny's launch. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, I unplugged that keyboard. Oh my lord. Genius, huh? All right, here we go. Let's just, I'm just gonna open Adam here and see if I can make a six. And if I can make a six, I can. That's good news. That's great news. Now we're gonna unplug it and we're gonna try to take the switch out, which was super easy because it totally works. That's awesome. That was easy and quick and very cool, very, very cool. Okay, and this time that means I'm gonna load this plate up with switches first, which I never do and I always say I'm gonna do, but this time we are gonna do it because I won't have to worry about uh, pushing it through the, well, the boxes are actually easier because they their feet are really trash. <laughs> so they just slide right through the PCB. If I was doing um, Zelio switches, it'd be a little harder. Okay, so. Just drop hold tights in here and do this real quick. Uh, I should start from the corner because that would, they're actually extremely difficult to see once you drop them in. So I just wanna make sure I don't miss a switch. Well, that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> I'm accidentally snapping them all over the room every time I, all right, you know what? I do this one at a time just so I don't mess it up. And I'm realizing you actually only have to push them in a tiny bit to get them to be uh, solid enough that they won't fall out. So like, that's not gonna fall out, it's just not entirely flush. So I can do a first pass where I just uh, get them all in. I need smaller, I need smaller tweezers. These The tip of these tweezers is a little too big. I keep forgetting that this uh, soldering iron is not hot. So I'm very hesitant to touch near the front, um, but it's not on. I should really have it completely unplugged for safety, but I don't. So just, you know, if you see me reach over and switch, <laughs> if you see me reach over and switch on the soldering iron, you know, just scream in the chat. The way that I read chat is about 25 to 30 seconds behind. So by then you'll, you'll see me burn myself. It'll be great. All right. So I'm wondering how many of these I can drop in and then just make a quick pass across them. I'm gonna try for two switches this time. So this isn't, this would be a lot fast. God, this would be a lot faster if one, I don't keep dropping them and two, they were easier. 
they were easier to pick up. They're so small. So I was gonna say a moment ago, I have the, uh, I have the the ones for the LEDs as well, and you have camera garbage. Uh, they are even smaller. They're like an eighth of the size of the other ones, and I just I can't do it because I genuinely don't know how I'll even get them in. Um, I also I don't really care about in switch LEDs honestly. I bought the Holtites only about a month into the first few keyboards I built actually. So back then uh, I was a little bit more um, open to the possibility of in switch LEDs because I was seeing a lot of them. And uh, but I've actually found that the problem with in switch LEDs is that unless you like I tend to use SA keycaps or GMK keycaps and they're obviously not transparent and they don't give off light at all. So you basically get like a really tiny amount of glow only between the keys and I haven't found it to look all that great. If you're gonna go lighting, you might as well just go under, under glow because at least that you can see it's unobstructed. And even that I, I get tired of pretty quickly. Like I've got this keyboard over here that's, there's the very first keyboard I built Oh, it's not plugged in now, so you can't see the light, but it has the whole underglow deal. And uh, I leave it on, but there are some days where I'm like, wow, it's a little intense. I will never understand how people can do the full-on animated rainbow effect constantly while they're typing. It's very distracting. All right, so these are going in pretty easily, and they're not falling out, but they're all non-flush, so I will have to do a pass where I actually like push hard on them to get them in. Um, yeah, I've been scared of whole tights too. I've had these for over a year now which is pretty funny. Um, and I keep saying like, oh, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. But I was always afraid I would get one jammed in and it wouldn't work and then I wouldn't be able to get it out and I would lose that switch uh, and the PCB would be useless. Um, I also did kind of a dumb thing to get these whole tights because this was sort of right in the, be I bought these right in the beginning of um, getting into the hobby and I still wasn't very good at looking for group buys and stuff. So I saw a thread about hole tights, and at the time it was just, here are the type of hole tights you should buy if you wanna do this, and here are the places you can buy them. So I went to uh, Mouser Electronics, which is the place people talk about all the time for this type of wholesale parts, and I bought them, but then I saw like three or four different group buys, and all right, that one I think I did lose. I heard it and I don't know where it went. And with the headphones on, it made a sound as it as it traveled through the universe. All right, um, I'll find that at some point, I'm sure. Uh, I found group buys after the fact for whole tights that lowered their price. These weren't that expensive, but they were more expensive than they should have been. Like, I actually don't remember how much they were, but I remember when I was done going like, okay, for 150 hole tights, like that seems a bit excessive because that site is really designed for people to buy, you know, 100,000 of these, not 150. So it's not really, it's not really priced for that type of purchase, but everything in this hobby is, you know. Oh, you heard? Most people turn off their, yeah, I think a lot of times the crazy rainbow thing is like a, um, it's like a uh, picture thing, you know, people like, and it looks really, I mean, it, it does look really cool. And also there's something about, I think a lot of times what you see is people do the crazy rainbow thing on their first keyboard, because if you're just getting into the hobby, like it's really neat to enter a space where you can, you know, build exactly what you want and have this crazy light show under your keyboard and everything. Uh, so people kind of go nuts on their first one, and then after a while they start to realize that for daily use it's a little excessive. It's gonna be funny if, you know, I never counted these, obviously. I just trusted that there were 150 in that bag. It's gonna be funny when I get to the end and I'm short, like 20 of them. All right, so as soon as I'm done with this row, I'm gonna test the whole row, just make sure that it works because now I'm just paranoid in general about this process. It seems fine, it seems too easy to be honest. Like I'm curious what happens, maybe these these box navies are just particularly forgiving, have, have particularly forgiving legs, I don't know. 
it went in with no effort and came out with no effort. So. But it didn't feel loose, I guess is what I should say. Like, it, it, it didn't feel like, oh, that switch will fall out. Uh, it felt like it'd be perfectly stable. It just wasn't nearly as hard to push. I was expecting a lot of um, force to get it in and force to take it out, but it did not require it. Now, I'm starting to think, I don't know that this is any faster than soldering as far as installation goes, because this, oop, I just popped one out, darn it. Oh, I just popped, yeah, okay. Okay, don't, don't wanna put pressure on them before they're fully seated. And you gotta put a little bit more than, is, than I'm comfortable with, honestly. I really gotta smash these things hard to get them in, and that's, that's a little nerve wracking. So I'm sorry, I'm kind of doing this in a spot that's probably not the most ideal for streaming purposes. It's a little a little harder, but basically all I'm doing is putting the tip in and sort of rotating while putting a pretty hard amount of downward pressure on. And actually I'm noticing, <clears throat> I'm noticing if I put my fingers on the backs of some of them, they, they do pop back up. Okay, so now I am getting nervous. All right, hold on. Let's see how far I need to push this in before I can't easily pop it out with my, okay. It's a lot further than I, than I feel like it needs to be, I really gotta push it in there. All right, please don't break PCB. There's a lot of flex in the board right now. Oh, jeez. Oh yeah, and I can't, I can't actually put it down to, yeah, now they're falling out. The ones that I'm not pushing in hard enough are falling out. Okay, all right, fine. Fine, really gotta go to town here. If, hmm. Okay. Optimism waning. Oh, optimism waning. They're popping out. Okay, hold on. All right, really gotta get them in there. Okay, it's just a, yep, it's just that they gotta go in way more than they seem like they do before they'll stay put. So we really gotta push them. So this is actually, is taking longer than soldering would, honestly. Boy, really gotta push on them. Really gotta push on them. What is that, six? Tilde, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, okay, I just don't wanna redo six a bunch of times because I'm trying to avoid pushing on the pads too. Okay. So that one just straight up pushed straight through the pad. That was actually what I was afraid of. Hmm. See, this is, okay, the other ones feel fine. I think I just went too far. No, I lost one there too, okay. I think I went too far on a few of these. I pushed too hard. So it's like a kind of a middle ground, I'm realizing. I need to get them past the surface, but not too far. Okay, yeah, all right. That's not bad now. You are learning with me. And of course this could end up being the thing where I use this keyboard for three days and then it stops working. And then I just, I've learned my lesson. All right, that one's back in now and feels pretty good. I think I just pushed it too far. Okay, so it's like, Far, but not too far. All right, sure. I can, I, I guess I could see how heat might make this better. The only fear I have is I don't know what temp would be good, you know? And um, also, unfortunately, my, the way my soldering iron works, kind of a pain to change the temperature. All right, these are feeling okay now. Let's keep going. All right. Good, good. All right, I'm, I'm starting to get a feel for what I think is the right, the right amount. Yeah, okay. 
it's not so bad. All right, positive, positivity returning, optimism returning. Ugh. Okay, good. Did I get these ones in all the way? Ooh, that one looked like the pad was moving a little. That would be bad. All right. Good. This one is like, I can't even feel it. Okay. All right. Two more and then one row is done and we'll test the row. And if it works, great. And if it doesn't work, then I will call into question whether or not it's worth doing the whole board. I think it's gonna work. I'm just a little nervous that, I saw some people saying that they had made hold tights better by adding a tiny bit of solder to the pad first, then pushing the hold tight in, because then the solder sticks between the hold tight and the board, but man, that feels like a real pain to do. I'm a fine solderer, but you know, I don't know that I want to get into that fine of an amount of solder. Hey, thanks, Brian. Good night. Hey, look what it is, Brett. Is it possible for the whole tights to be pushed all the way through? Yes, no, it is 100% possible. I just did it a second ago. And that's what I'm trying to avoid now is like finding the middle ground between pushed in enough that they won't pop out if you put back pressure on them, but not too much that I go all the way through. It's fun, okay. So, all but one here seem good. This front one seems like it's sticking up a little. Okay. That's a one whole row. So, I'm gonna put switches in the row. Oh, that was too many switches. I'm gonna put switches in the row, plug it in, and see how it goes. Um, go in, please. I'm also, yeah, I mean, there's definitely enough, there's enough of a grip from the hold tight to hold the switch, certainly. This is not as much as I would have imagined. I'm curious, so, okay. Also, I realized earlier I said, oh, I don't wanna, I wanna do this with the plate because I don't want the switches to go in too deep, but that was asinine thought process because the switches always sit flush on the PCB, so I don't know what I was thinking there. Plate would obviously hold them more stably than this, so they might not be as stable as they will be in a final build, but I mean, they're definitely, they're not coming out in any way. I wonder if this, well, we'll see. When I take these out, we'll see how many pop out of the whole tights. I don't, I don't think they will, honestly. They feel pretty stable. All right, what do I get if I guessed, if I poured the exact number of switches out of the bag? Come on. Come on, look at that. Optimism, all time high. An exact switch pour. I don't know what that means. Okay, there we go. Let's give it a shot. Uh, where are you? No. Oops, I plugged that into my PC. Hold on. Let's switch over to the Mac. Come on, there we go, okay. Let's see if backspace works. It does, it's a good sign. All right, yeah, that's escape, so that doesn't help. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, dash, equals, backspace. Hey, this works, this totally works. Okay, and all the, all the LEDs still work. Uh, cool, very cool, okay. Let me plug this keyboard back in, just so if I need to use it, I can. Which is right here. Okay. So you can see the. It looks actually like this is animating, but it's not. That's an LED camera thing. This camera shutter speed is not ideal for those lights. I actually have. So part of the reason I use external uh, lights in here, I should take a picture of the new setup. I, I talked about this in a previous stream, but I did a new, new desk. I, uh, I had a Geek Desk for uh, with the walnut top, and I got rid of the Geek Desk. And I switched it. Jesus. I switched it to just uh, 
standard iron or steel legs, new wood top that's uh, 20 inches bigger, which makes basically the 20 inches that I'm streaming in right now are effectively that space. Made it a little less cramped so that I could stream without having to have my desk uh, unusable otherwise. So it'll, it allowed me to keep some of my streaming gear out and on my desk in a way that doesn't affect my daily use of the desk, but also allows me to just have everything permanently set up. Um, and I added two LED lights, um, soft uh, color temperature controllable LED lights. Um, it does look like a Quest Down stream. Uh, I don't think this keyboard makes a sound, but some keyboards when you plug them in also make a little chiming sound, uh, like you unlocked a chest. Um, so out of these LED lights, there's two of them, one bouncing the ceiling and one pointing straight down at, at this. And um, that uh, makes, what was I talking about? I don't know, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, I redid my desk, there's LED lights in here now. Um, so it's a little more controllable than it was in the past. Um, and I had a reason that I brought that up. Oh, yes, so part of the reason that I did that was that I have this uh, lamp over my desk that I was using in the past for the stream, and uh, it had a Philips Hue bulb in it. And the Philips Hue bulb refreshes on a rate, or has a has an electronic, uh, I don't know what that's called, like the, the, the spectrum it, that it would be refreshing at, or whatever, was noticeable on camera. Uh, so that's why I went out and got lights at a photography store that were specifically tuned for shooting uh, video so that I could make sure that I did not have that uh, rolling effect that happens when you have an LED or, or electronic light near the shutter. Um, and it's not very noticeable in some of my older streams, so there are a couple of close-ups where you can actually see it happening, the like rolling, rolling shutter almost effect. Um, these are much better, plus they are uh, temperature controllable, which is nice because I'm shooting half natural, half LED light in here, at least when I shoot during the day because there's there are two windows in the office that are open. Um, so I can tune these things to, to meet halfway, basically. I think right now they're set to 4800, uh, which is nice. It, it, it's much more controllable. And shooting in the evening became, or shooting live streaming in the evening became much easier because I can control the actual overall brightness, which in the past was quite difficult in this room. So you can see from my initial streams actually that like there's a lot of noise in the video and uh, I didn't really have much control over that because I had just sort of standard lighting in this room. I was using just a desk lamp and just an additional lamp. So the LED lights made that way better plus they're smaller and not as noticeable as two lamps sitting above your desk uh, when they're not on. Um, so that's cool. They do get hot, which is strange because they're LED, but they get really hot. So it's actually quite warm in this room. It's, it's like, I don't know, 80 degrees here in Portland today. And my air conditioning should be on, but I don't think it is right now. And uh, I'm, it's toasty in here, it's toasty. Oh yeah, the camera, right. So that was the other thing that I upgraded as part of the desk slash streaming upgrade was I was shooting, so I was using the one that I'm using for the face right now, which is just some, I don't even know what that thing is. I wanna say it's like a Canon, can, I think it's Canon uh, brand standard camcorder and it is not good. Um, I'm using it for my face because it doesn't really matter fidelity wise for my face. Like it's good enough for a face, um, but for overhead shots, it was pretty bad. A lot of my original videos uh, are pretty blurry on the on the stuff here. Um, so uh, this is a Sony uh, A7 III, uh, which just came out and is like the, uh, the child, I suppose, the predecessor, no, not predecessor. What's the follow-up to the a7 2s i think is the one uh which is like basically everybody's favorite videography camera um because it's super good with low light successor thank you <laughs> predecessor um successor thank you yes uh the a7 s3 uh s2 no the a7 2s 
was the camera everybody loved uh, because it had an insanely high noise uh, ISO uh, ability that was very low noise. So people love shooting video with it. Uh, and I think it shot 4K, I don't remember. This is the follow-up to it, has the same quality with noise handling and with ISO, uh, but is $600 cheaper, um, even though it's a better camera and also has 4K and all that. I'm not shooting in 4K, obviously, because YouTube 4K is still a bit of a disaster. Um, so, but someday I might want to switch to 4K, um, so I like the ability to do it. Uh, though that would obviously require that this camera gets upgraded and that the, this this camera gets upgraded. This camera is just a Logitech C922 webcam. Uh, this is a crap camera. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I upgraded basically all the hardware related to streaming. I also upgraded the PC. So it was like, that's why I didn't stream for like three months or however long it was because I was basically um, changing every single part of this desk and then rewiring everything, which is a pain. And I swapped cases in the PC after, so I initially I swapped processor and graphics card. And then like a month later I swapped cases, which I could have saved myself a lot of trouble just doing it all at once, but that's not really how I think for some reason with PCs. So I, uh, I initially upgraded to, a. God, I don't even know what it is. Some i7 something or other. I think it was a 67K and now it's a 68K, something like that, I don't know. But the card upgrade was a 980 Ti to a 1080 Ti. This was months ago that I did that. Um, but I wanted to redo all my uh, fans and all that stuff because my PC was really loud. Um, I was using the Fractal Design C case, which has a uh, hard front cover, and so not a lot of air gets in. So I actually moved it into a Fractal Design Meshify C, um, which has a mesh front, gets a lot more air, which is great. And then I also upgraded all the fans in it to like Noctua, basically silent fans, uh, as well as a couple of Corsair ML120 Pro silent fans in various spots. And I spent way too long reading about and tuning all the fan performance uh, with the goal of basically getting the PC to be absolutely silent uh, for normal use and then as quiet as is humanly possible um, for gaming. And it's it was well worth the effort. It's very, very, very quiet now. So even when I'm playing a game at max resolution, and I also uh, finally got a... Um, a good PC display. I had been running the PC through my TV, through my uh, 4K TV, which was fine because I was mostly playing PC games with a controller sitting on the couch. But after a while, I started really wanting to get into playing uh, more competitive, not competitive, but like more multiplayer stuff on my PC. Um, so like, you know, we'd been playing, uh, friends and I had been playing a lot of Fortnite and uh, Destiny and The Division on PS4. And Fortnite specifically, it started to get to a point where it's like, I really want mouse and keyboard for the building and all that. So uh, I finally bought a display for the PC and moved the PC over to this desk as well. So I bought a um, 1440p uh, Acer Predator G-Sync display that does 165 Hertz. And that, honestly, uh, is better than just about anything else I've done to the PC. It's it sounds like marketing garbage when you hear like, oh, you need 144 hertz, or, oh, you need 165 hertz, and then you actually play with 140 hertz or whatever, and it's so great. Um, the display itself sucks because PC displays suck. Like, the color reproduction is bad, the sharpness is bad, you know, they're all still running at 1x, basically, like, retina is not a thing on PC displays for the most part, and that sucks. So like the actual display, if I had to work on this display, I it's it's garbage, but uh, 165 Hertz is spectacular. And so when I, I've now got, you know, this display sitting on my desk next to an LG 5K display plugged into my MacBook Pro running, you know, 5K at Retina and, and, and all that. So the most noticeable thing is when I have them both on side by side, color, sharpness, quality, the LG is, 
just infinitely better to look at. But, you know, 60 hertz versus 165, you actually notice it. Like it's, I, I didn't think I would notice it as much, but like when I'm moving my mouse around on my PC, and then I sw uh, switch the KVM to this and I move my mouse around on the Mac, I see the, the difference. It's surprising. Um, if I could get a, I mean, I, I think we're quite a ways away from Retina 5K at 165 hertz, but someday that would be great. Oh my God, this is getting tiring. I'm not even a, no, where'd you go? I can only lose like 20 of these and then I'm stuck. So I'm gonna try, try not to lose anymore. I definitely lost one. It flew somewhere. All right, come on. If I didn't have to, if I didn't have to use tweezers to get them in, this wouldn't be nearly as bad. Uh, Cody says, looks pretty decent for webcam. This little one, yeah, the, the C922 webcam is actually really good. A lot of, the reason I bought it was because a lot of streamers, uh, game streamers use it as their face cam. Um, and it's it was totally fine for a face cam. It's actually what I used for my face cam before I bought the this this guy, which allowed me to swap that guy because that was up there and now that's, so. I was using it for that before and it's it's a perfectly fine face cam, definitely. Its biggest problem is the uh, endless hunting that it does to try to, it just has a really hard time focusing. It, it can really only focus it like you gotta, you know, you gotta really cover the whole screen and it, oh, yuck. You know, its color is not great. So for close-ups, it's actually not good. Um, I, I'm thinking I should swap these and put the, C922 back as my face cam and actually swap this down to the close up because I think I could at least light lock it and focus lock it. Um, so I'll probably do that. I've just, it's like I just got this setup done and then immediately thought, oh, I should, I should change this. And then I didn't have the heart to do it to myself. I spent like, it took me like two weeks to get the, the office put back together. And at some point I was like, I just need to do work. I need this stuff to be out of my way. Uh, one benefit of streaming is that you get the view only to the, my right. So everything that was sitting in a pile to my right is now to the left and you can't see it. I've told you about it, which is a mistake because now you know you can imagine it there, but there's a lot of junk all over the ground over there. Not like junk, but you know, junk basically. All right, good. One, two more on this guy, oh boy. Okay, we just hit something that I don't have a solution for. There are... <laughs> okay, so this is why you think ahead. Um, I'm gonna show you this. I didn't think of this at all. Centrax 60 board is a multi-purpose board that can be used by different layouts. Um, all right, you know what? We're gonna do this a different way because I can't, I can't. We're gonna do this. I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna go real tight focus here. Oh, look at that, all right. Uh, well, our lighting is gonna be a problem, but, god damn it. This, and I'm gonna hit the microphone, okay. This is a multi-use PCB. So you can see there's sort of a bit of a Swiss cheese issue here, right? Uh, the problem is that if you look at, uh, where am I? Uh, we're going this way. Oh God. If you look at this hole right here, if I can get it to focus. Uh, oh, this is, a, this is a bloody nightmare. All right, let me just explain it. There are a couple of pads that are open. They're not closed circles. One of them particularly is the backslash key. That backslash key, because of ISO support, the stabilizer hole splits that pad So I will have to use solder to get that hole tight in place and keep it in place. So that's gonna be a challenge. And I actually see one more that's got that problem. How many more? Oh boy, several. Oh, nuts. Okay. Uh, one, two, five, one, five. Okay, that, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, there's gonna be three here that might have it. That one's okay. 
All right, there's four total keys. Possibly five. No, four total keys. The most noticeable one, oh right, this is genius. All right. The most noticeable one is the, back, the backslash. The backslash one is real bad. So I'm gonna try this one more time to show this because I sort of, jeez. Oh, this backslash one is real bad. All right, get a little closer to this. It is right there. Eh, not this one this one you see it you see how that pad is <laughs> you son of a bitch that pad is open you see it right there that pad is split in half by the stabilizer hole that pad cannot take a hole tight therefore a switch cannot be put in that with a hole tight so <laughs> okay we're gonna we're gonna come back to that because I don't have a good solution. I'm gonna come back to that. I think that I can solve it. I think I can solve it by uh, soldering the hole tight in place. But that is going to be extremely difficult to do. I'm actually wondering, okay, I'm thinking about this backward. I'm wondering if instead what I do is I actually put the hole tight on the switch, put the switch in, and then solder around the whole hole tight. But I think you're right, I think it might fall out. I didn't think about this at all. Hmm. not consider this problem. I think if there's, yeah, honestly, I think the person who said that this worked perfectly in a Centrax 60 either used ISO, in which case that would not be a pad you'd use, and the other pad is safe. So the ISO pad is safe. So if they used ISO, they'd be fine. An ISO enter, which is like shaped like a return uh, character, would be safe. So that could have been part of it. The other thing is they might just have said that, uh, said it was safe because they tried it on a couple of switches. Yeah, this is the thing about keyboard PCBs is I've heard a lot of people say that like key keyboard PCBs are, uh, are more Swiss cheesy than just about any other PCB design because of this, because they basically are like, oh, you can, you know, there's 40 layouts here. Um, that's unfortunate. I, I'm thinking what I do is I take a switch, I put the hole tight on the switch itself, and then I put it into the board, and then solder all around the hole tight, and I bet it would hold. Solder is insanely strong. I bet it would hold. That's gonna be the last thing I do. Cause here's the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is I also have a, well, here's a second plan. I have some Hako or, they're not called Hako, Halo. I guess they're Hako now, but they were Halo. I have some, excuse me, some Halo switches. And those Halo switches have hole tights built into the foot and their hole tights are really big. Uh, those I absolutely could solder into this switch and then potentially pop off the keyboard and it would still function as a hole tight, I think. Um, so there are options. The other option, of course, is just soldering a switch into this one spot and um, picking now what it, <laughs> what it is forever and just being okay with it. No, that's not good, can't do that. All right, okay, I'll have to solve that. I'll have to solve that. I think that's gonna be a different day solution because I'm betting that's gonna, well, I guess the thing I'll try first is just, I'll try um, soldering. I'll try putting the whole tight on a switch, jamming it in, soldering it while it's in and see if I can pull it out and it sticks. I think that would work, I think. Um, ah, that would be really disappointing if that didn't work. 
It's like the o oh, okay. It's like the only uh I can't believe I didn't think of that before. That's that's honestly just a mistake because now in hindsight it's obvious this board has a bunch of things. There are a lot of other PCBs that are way worse than this board, so it's actually not the worst board I could have picked for this. I the board that's in my um I forget which Oh, that Tina C build, the key, the keyboard fans Tina C that I built. Um, that thing is a disaster. You, it's there are so many holes in that thing. It was actually hard to solder. Like it, it, there were pads everywhere. Every single switch had like forty pads on it. It was insane. Um, sorry, uh, uh, bees. Uh, yeah, bees asked uh, if it was a tofu. No, this is the original tofu. <laughs> the clip that I guess keyboard fans apparently just basically. Stole for the tofu, which, you know, I think is what they do in general. They they tend to take designs that other people have made popular. Whatever, I, I that's not my place to say whether or not that's a serious problem. It seems like it could be a problem. I have a Tina C, which is effectively a, you know, HHKB slash duck, duck uh, clone or whatever. Duck? Is it duck? Um... I guess everybody's kind of mimicking HHKB, so I don't know how much there is to be said. This this clip, I, I guess somebody said that the clip is actually mimicking another board as well, so there seems to be a bit of that going around. Um, but I bought this like six months ago before the, the keyboard fans one came out. Um, I like the keyboard fans stuff. I, I think it's fine. I, it is a little, um, I've had a, some problems with imprecision. Lack of precision, I guess, would be the right way to say that. Uh, the Tina C required that you use basically their PCB to make it fit because they put the screw holes in the um, <clears throat> in the case slightly in the wrong spot. It wasn't like a hundred percent wrong. It was like off by like a millimeter. Their PCB is also off by a millimeter. So if you use their PCB, oops, did I push that one too far? I did. There you go, Brett, I went right through. Um, their PCB uh, fit perfectly. So, and I, I don't mean that at, to suggest that they did it so you'd buy their PCB because they actually sell it without their PCB and that's how I bought it originally. Um, I think it's just a tolerances, lack of polish on the design, um, or they designed it specifically with their PCB in mind and their PCB actually has that uh, issue. And so it's just sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy because um, I wanted to use I didn't want to use, oh, damn it. Okay. This pad is like too big. It's like not quite the same size as all the rest of the pads. So these keep slipping through. I wonder if this pad is also going to be a problem. All right. I I'm starting to wonder like, is this worth it? Oh God. Because I think I'm gonna end up having to solder some of these to get them to work. All right, I'm gonna try one more of these, but honestly, this pad looks too big. All right, it worked that time. Hmm. All right, you know, I'm gonna set this one aside just in case it happens to be too narrow. That's funny, these streams, they, they take so much longer than I think they're gonna take because I, I was saying to my wife like, oh, I'll be done by seven. It's like 6.20 already. I haven't even, I'm not even halfway through the keyboard. It's, and I did the stabilizer stuff off stream. It's a little intense how long this stuff can take. Like long term, if this works, the time is worth it because then I've got a board I can swap. So that's great, but it's a little, it's a, it's a friggin' time commitment, man. Okay. Oh, I never tested this row, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust this system at this point. Oh, you know, the other thing is I, now I have to remove all of these. So let's see if any of them pop out there. Hold tights. Nope, it's all good. One downside of this I'm realizing is that realistically using hold tights in a plate, with a plate. Ah, that popped one out. All right. Optimism is fading quite a bit right now because that was one switch in out and that fell out. 
Now, it's totally possible that I didn't push that one in quite enough. However, the idea that I could get to a point where I'm constantly having to take the PCB out of the case to repair uh, hole tights. I guess I wouldn't actually have to take it out. I could just push it back in as is, but... Oh shit, which one was that? I didn't notice which one I just put back in. There it is. Um, all right. Let's stay in there this time, pal. The thing is, they feel like they're... Like that one felt like it shouldn't have come out, but... All right. Okay, so that's two rows. <laughs> two two rows and a, and, and a quarter here. Um, and one one possibly fatal flaw that may make all of this for naught when it's done. So that's always a that's always a good thing to look forward to is that this all might fall apart after all the work has been done. Uh, it is really hard to tell which ones I haven't put these in. When they when they sit flush, they are barely noticeable. I'm getting very excited about the M60, the Rama M60, and there's two TKL buys right now that are pending, about to start, both of which look cool. One of them specifically uh, looks really neat. Uh, it's the Tri C87, I think is what it's called, and it's got some hexagonal design additions to it. Which, based on the fact that I use hexagonal stuff all in my company design and this design, I'm super keen on that. Uh, that buy hasn't started, but I really want to build a TKL because I now that I'm using the keyboard for both <clears throat> my PC and my Mac, and I'm using it for gaming in addition to working, I find a TKL to be a pleasant keyboard style for gaming. I've got this, um, the 75% here, or six, uh, 65%, 75%, 75%, that's a 75% board, um, which is fine, but I want a little distance between the uh, number keys and the function keys. Um, <laughs> yes, mo people don't build more than one whole type board. Yeah, I, I'm seeing why, like this is, this is a lot of work um, and it may not even work at the end. Uh, soldering them in C is more appealing now. Yes, 100%. I thought going into this, like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm not going to have to solder anything, which is just such a time sink. <laughs> it's nothing compared to this. This is way slower than, way slower than soldering. Like, I would, I would have finished this board a long time ago if I was soldering. But I wouldn't be able to randomly switch switches that will probably snap the hole tights out all the time. I hope it doesn't, but I think it will. This just doesn't seem, doesn't seem foolproof here. All right, getting there, we're getting there, we're making progress. Okay, the negative of this lens cap as, as a holder for these is the lens cap has a, uneven bottom and it's spinning around. Okay. So yeah, the M60, it's supposed to be the summer, but I don't know, it seems more like a fall thing. Uh, that's the Ramaworks thing. I want that looks really neat. And yeah, hopefully one of these TKLs will come through. <laughs> yes, exactly. This is like, this is like building. This is like what I used to do with web stuff, where it's like, uh, oh, you know, what I really want to do is, I want to write a weblog again. Like I really, I mean, hell, I'm I'm in the middle of this right now because I haven't updated my website, my blog in like a year. But like, oh, I really want to write on my weblog again. But you know what I need? I need a whole new CMS. At least now I'm smart enough to not write the CMS myself these days. I just pick a new CMS. But it used to be that I would literally write the CMS every single time. So writing a blog post. Oh, I should just write a post today. It turns into, oh, two months of building a CMS. And then I get the CMS built. And then the first blog post is, 
Well, I wanted to write a new blog post, but I had to write this CMS, so the whole first post is just about the CMS, and then I won't write again for a year. You know? It's good. That's basically this. I'll, I'll, I'll never end up hot swapping the switches. Just you watch. These box navies will stay in forever. In fact, this keyboard will just go on a shelf. I won't even type on it. I mean, at some point, my shelf is not visible in the stream. I wish it were just so you, so there was like the, the like, reality check over my shoulder of should you be doing this at all uh, and you guys could just constantly say like hey look over your shoulder you don't need another keyboard uh because there's nine there are nine on the wall behind me and if i switch to my face here you can see there's two uh sitting on a stand on my desk currently that i have been playing with there's one on my desk that i i'm typing on actively and then i'm building one right now What is that? 9, 11, 12, 13? 13 keyboards. That's stupid. It's really stupid. Honestly, I should just sell some of the older ones that I made. I, there's something about making them, though. They, they become, like, trophies. I kind of don't want to let them go. Stupid as that sounds. Like, I like having them on the wall. Like, they kind of become their own version of art. Um... It's like the same reason that I, you know, I'd get people asking after I would retire a website design, like it's redesign my site. People would be like, oh, can I buy the previous design? It's like, nah, I don't know, man. It's like, it's my stuff. It's my work. I did it. I feels like mine. I don't want anybody else to have it. Box navies click sadly from the shelf. Yes, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're, it, 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 they'll be in good company because there's two box whiteboards up there that Click silently, or click, not silently, but click loudly actually from the shelf, yeah. Click sadly. Yeah, there's a box navy board sitting right to my right there, or a box uh, whiteboard. Um, I've never had a board that has the navies in it, uh, because last time, I actually, I can't remember what stream it was, but maybe it's the Pearl. I was building the Pearl, I was, I was going to use the box navies actually, and somebody in chat talked me out of it, uh, because I guess navies can stick. Uh, which I haven't really looked into since, um, so I don't know how big of a problem that is. But uh, at the time, I had the z uh, the Xylance, which I love. Um, so I did the Pearl board with the Xylance, and then I went to do the Accent board with the Xylance and realized that I had only ordered 100 Xylance. And... I did a 65% board, so I didn't have, or I wanted to do a 67% board, but I did a 40, so I didn't have enough. And Zeal was out of the country traveling, and so he hasn't been able to ship more switches. So I have a order of Xylance, because I really, really like them. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to start with the navies. Ah, Box Jades, that's right. It was Box Jades. I have Box Jades. And that's what it was. You were right. And I, you know what? I'm realizing I like the jades better than the navies. But we'll start with navies. It's fine. It's going to be great when I get to the last switch and I snap the PCB. That'll be fun. Cody, were you the one that talked me out of jades? Can't remember who it was. One of you bastards did it. I'm really getting tired of putting these in. Imagine if you had to do a, had to do a 90 or a, an 80 or a full size keyboard right now. So I, I wouldn't have, I would have gotten three in and given up. I'm kind of halfway to giving up right now, honestly. I'm so depressed about that backslash and how I'm gonna have to solve that. Huckle clears. I have, uh, I have those um, holy pandas that I made by doing the halo mixed with the pandas. I, I, uh, when I got the accent, that buy was delayed by a full year. 
or not the buy, the delivery of it was delayed by a full year. And uh, because of that, the Xcent was actually one of maybe the third or fourth buy I ever joined, maybe the second. And um, it, uh, at the time, I didn't really know much about switches or which switches I would like the most. And so the Xcent Premium Kit, which came with a limited edition GMK sw uh, caps, also you had to choose switches. And I chose, um, they only had uh, MX, it was like MX Blues or something. I can't remember what it was, but one of the options was mod switches, which I, at the time, had never tried. So I ordered it with the mod, no. All right, at least I know where that went, but that one fell. Um, I ordered it with mod H, mod M, I don't remember which. Anyway, mod switches. And then subsequently in the two years that it took for that uh, board to arrive, or however long it ended up being, I built something with mod switches and really disliked them. Um, so when I got the accent and it showed up with those switches, it was, I just felt bad because it's such a waste. I should just give them away because I don't, that was a weird sound because I don't need them, but I don't need to like sell them. And maybe somebody likes mod switches out there. I heard a weird click that sounded like one fell out, but doesn't look like it. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of the box switches, uh, and I'm a big fan of Zelio switches in general. And I think the Xylence for me are a good combination of the Zelio feel, but with the sound that I really like. Because I had at some point I had switched. So this board is the board that I'm typing on to the right here is um, uh, Ze uh, 62 gram Zelios. Uh, and they're too light. But back when I first got into mechanical keyboards, again, I didn't really know what I would like, what I wouldn't like. And I picked the lightest spring weight that he had because from what I've been reading, it sounded like the heavier the spring weight, the more fatigued I was gonna get. In hindsight, 62 is just too light. Uh, it just doesn't feel as good to type on. And I found the 67 is about right for me. Um, and so I started, Jesus, get in there started using, he released those uh, silencing clips as uh, Zelencios. And so I started doing 65 Zelios with the silencing clips, um, which I like fine, but the travel distance reduction is kind of noticeable and they still don't sound the way I wanted. And the Zylance solved those problems. I think travel reduction is still there, I'm sure, but it's I don't feel it, um, or at least not as much with the, as with the Zelencios. And uh, and the sound I really like. I it's oh, damn you. I feel like a, a neurosurgeon that smoked a pack of cigarettes before going to surgery. Like my hands aren't shaky, but they're not stable enough to do this fine work for this long. Oh. And these tweezers just keep pinching enough to smack them away. So there's now two on the ground. Should be fine, should be fine, should be fine. It's all good, it's all good. Get in there, you bastards. Anyway, yeah, the, the Xylance I, I really like a lot. So I have some ordered, but I don't know. And so actually that XN board is still using uh, Telios on the modifiers and the spacebar, which I thought I would like, but I realized it, that I was right the first time I tried a linear switch. I don't like linear switches. Even if they are made by Zeal, I don't like them. I need a little bit of tactile feedback. Doesn't have to be crazy, but linear just doesn't feel good. Oh God. Don't leave, don't run away. Too many of your brothers have. I need you to stay. God's sake. Okay. All right. Starting to feel like home stretch now. Which is basically just bringing myself closer and closer to having to figure out that backslash. Which is not cool. It's not cool at all. Melody 96 with RGB housings and zeal stems is on a brass plate. Oh, yeah. That sounds good. Uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy the brass plate sound. I think my two favorite things so far are brass plate and um, 
honestly, car uh, either carbon fiber or plastic plates. There's something about a plastic case, like even, even though this keyboard to my right that I type on all the time is not my ideal switch now that I've had it for a few years, the wind keyless acrylic uh, sandwich design um, and the plastic plate has a nice like thawky sound to it. Let me switch here and I'll try and get this to, there we go. It's, just, it's, a, it's a pleasant sound. I like the way this sounds. Uh, and I like carbon fiber has a similar sound um, and brass sounds good. The one I like the least is stainless steel. If it's just a plain brushed stainless steel uh, plate, I'm not as big a fan of the way that tends to make switches sound. The benefit is actually if you use a, if you use click switches though, like clicky switches, it actually doesn't matter a whole lot because the click is so loud. Um, so long as you dampen underneath the PCB and just avoid any of the metallic ping that can come from like the hollowness of cases, then you're you get a really, really stable sound. There's actually a board I built uh, last year. Maybe it was this year. I think it was last year. Um, it's a Centrax 60 uh, PCB with a carbon fiber plate and it's built into a Royal Glam wooden case and I put box whites on it. And it is... It sounds so good. Like the cl the clicking, the click sound is really crisp. There's no reverb because it's a wooden case with basically no opening underneath it at all. Like it's a really tight case. Um, and it just has a very crisp, clean sound. And the one benefit of using uh, click switches is that spacebar rattle isn't as noticeable because the click is so loud that it kind of compensates for it. So there is that benefit. Um, Jesus. I should just do a 10 hour stream where all I do is put hole tights in. And honestly, we're getting there because this has been two hours, I think. Oh Lord. You know what it actually should be is it's a 10 hour stream and I miss every time. And it, the, the, the hole tight just keeps popping out every time. For 10 full hours, I'd never actually get one hole tight in. And I just keep going, oh, ooh, ah, you know, just over and over. YouTube subscriptions just skyrocket. How can someone be so bold, so brave, they would say. Still need to try a top mounted board with vintage blacks. I've heard that vintage blacks feel really good on aluminum plate on a top mount case. Yeah, I've never, people love vintage blacks. Talk about them all the time. I have never tried them. Um, it's just one of those things where like, I've never gone out of my, I've never tried hard enough to find like either a buy, I actually saw, I think there's a buy for them going on right now. Uh, oh, Geekhack, I could swear I saw somebody listing that there were that there were vintage blacks available. Um, Cause I assume you, they are like literally vintage, right? They have to be found and harvested from old boards. So like, it's like a, it's like um, fossil fuels, you know? There's a limited number of Eventually, we won't be able to make boards with vintage blacks anymore. Or, I guess we will, because we could just kill the boards we've made recently. I gotta test where this switch goes. I think it's dead center, but I always am afraid I'm gonna put it in the wrong spot. Oh, interesting. That would actually go in either. That's kind of bonkers. But it's definitely the left side. Okay. So I got, um, they're up, they're sitting here. I got uh, SA Oblivion finally, uh, or Oblivion SA. I can never tell. Everybody who does SA caps decides for themselves where the SA goes. There's like SA Retro, but then there was Penumbra SA. Uh, people seem to just choose at the time. Hey, where did you come from? One of these just fell out. Where did it fall out from? Is that one I dropped earlier? That's great. Um, I'm so excited about uh, Oblivion SA. It's it's so boring, like it's just gray and white, but I really like the modifiers. They're like Git modifiers. They look really neat. Um, and I definitely want to put that on board. So I might actually put them on this 
uh, just to test them out, but long term they will go on a TKL so I can see more of the keys. Where the hell did that one? Whoa! Hey, they're falling out. You sons of bitches. Two just fell out. Where did they fall out from? I see one. You, I cannot. Okay, this is this is becoming depressing. I mean, to be fair, I did say, come watch me fail. And now here we are, usually old stock. Yeah, that's crazy. I can't believe people have to. I mean, I guess there are a ton of keyboards that use vintage cherry switches, certainly in the, in the world, but that doesn't sound fun to have to go around harvesting them. I can't believe this one just fell out. It's so depressing. Okay, stay in there, you son of a bitch. Why did it fall out? I don't understand, it was tight before. Like, did it just loosen over time? Like, is that something that's gonna happen? All right, where did the other one fall out from? I'm trying to find one that's only got one, because I... Oh, this is stupid. This is a stupid hobby. This is so dumb. Why do I put myself through this? All right, I, I don't know if that one actually fell out or if I just didn't actually put it in yet when it came out. Let's see. Oh, I, oh, I didn't put it in because I couldn't decide where it went because I realized I started to put it in there but I need to actually check where the switch is gonna go there because I'm gonna use a short left switch, uh, left shift. This one can go in. Oh, you, please. Go back in time and tell me not to do this, please. I, I'm, I'm gonna really love reporting on this on the next stream saying, hey, yeah, this, uh, that, remember that hold tight keyboard? Yeah, that worked for a week. And then I had to reply, <laughs> then I had to solder it because every single hold tight fell out. Oh, jeez. Come on, we can do this. I believe in it. All right. All right, who's left? Who is left? We're close. Okay, bottom switches, I just need to confirm their placement because I can never remember. And the way these Centrac PCBs are labeled is not any help because it says 125 and 125, but they're both not next to the exact holes. So it's unclear which are which. So we're gonna grab a one, two, fives, because I wanna do three one, two, fives on the left, four one, two, fives on the right. And these are one, fives. I don't want one, fives. Where, does this bag not have any, did I happen to open them? Okay. Okay. You'd think by now I would be good enough to eyeball this. Well, maybe I can find them in the Git modifier so I can also show off what those look like. There we go. So, these Git modifiers have, uh, let's do this. So that one says rebase. Uh, well, this one just says, hello world. But, uh, let's see. Here's the a return key or that says checkout. Uh, stash. Um, oh, here's my favorite. The backspace key is revert. I like that. That's cool. Um, commit. Uh, it's a cool idea. It's a very cool idea. Tab is tag. I like this. This is good stuff. All right, I found a, I found a one two five. So let's put it on and just make sure that. Three one two fives fit, and I'm pretty sure it's the left side that these go on. Uh, if it's, well, this is upside down, but either way. Okay, so if there was one there, let's grab a couple more. And that's a one two five stash, and a one two five branch. Oops. Um, so let's put this. Box switches fit keycap. Oh, so, you know, one downside I'm realizing is box switches, um, they hold on to stems real hard. And so I have a feeling I'm gonna pull switches off when I'm trying to pull keycaps off. But I actually change keycaps on keyboards way less than you might think. So probably not a huge deal. All right, that looks like that's correct. Let's just confirm this fits here. It does. OK. 
Okay, and then it'll be four of them on the left. Make sure, good. Now I think it goes to the right. Yeah, okay, so they are labeled correctly. I just didn't quite understand what it meant there or how it was, okay. Left on left and right on right. Now I've got these keys everywhere, or these switches, uh, caps everywhere, I should say. Let's just put these here. I think there's a, I think one of these even has like a, a git tree on the cap. Like it has a dependency tree or whatever, I don't remember. Okay, what time is it? I'm sweating. I'm sweating from this. Soldering iron isn't even on. This is insane. It's too much. I bit off more than I can chew. I'm admitting to you right now. Ugh. Like I could have, I could have soldered. I could have soldered and had the caps on. Well, okay. You know what? I'd like to say I could have soldered and had the caps on, but the truth is, every single time that I make a keyboard, I make some dumbass mistake halfway through that I have to undo that always adds another hour to the process. So, ow, I just hit myself right in the fingertip with that. It really hurt. For a second, I thought it was hot. All right. Don't fail me, whole tights. Don't make this all for naught. Don't make me look like an idiot. More so than normal. Please. Okay, we got about six switches left to go. And then the fun part of trying to solve that slash key, if I don't run out of time. Come here. Oh, I also need to, yeah, okay. I also need to test which pads the function key and right space bar go into, because again, I never remember exactly which ones it is to create the layout that I want, which is the short shift on the right with a function key to the right for layers. These are impossibly small. How on earth could I do the LED versions? Like how would I even get them into the pads? Like it, that's insane. They're so small. These are tiny and those are even smaller. How could I possibly do it? There's no way. There's probably like some official way to do this that's better. Okay, I don't wanna break this pad. This pad has a tiny hole in it from there, okay. Don't, I don't want to get to the end of this and end up breaking something after all this work. That would really suck. Okay. I feel like a jeweler right now. Like I've watched how it's made and jewelers have to put diamonds in with tweezers with a, with a magnifying glass. This is what this feels like, honestly. And at the end of the day, this keyboard might cost as much as a diamond ring, so. Again, another pad that has a little spot taken off of it, so I don't want to push too hard because I don't want to break it off. Okay. One more on this side. Then three more total. I'm sorry if this... <sighs> Serenity now. Sanity later. Oh, nope, stay. So honestly, I'm past surrender. This is insanity. Okay. Two five. So I get my if I could get my close up if I get my close up cam to better uh, Jesus to better focus, I would show you what I was confused about. Well, I wasn't confused. I just didn't trust it. Which is that on this PCB near these holes, uh, on the bottom spots of the where the switch where the switch would fit in it, it does say one two five and one point five uh i just didn't trust necessarily that it was labeled logically because i've had problems with other pcs pcbs in the past where it says that and then it it turns out they're just literally listing the options they're not actually putting them in the correct order so okay go in there go in there go in there go in there don't break a little further that one's good this one can go a little further Oh, please don't break. Ugh. Okay, good. Those three are done. 
That side's done, space bar's done. Three more on this side. Then I think it's nightmare time. I think my idea is gonna work. I'm feeling optimistic again. Across the board, I feel non-optimistic. I feel very pessimistic about this working long-term on this board because I think, I think I'm gonna end up pulling them out accidentally and just having to constantly add them back, which, you know, not a huge deal. It's not, a, a, you know, the end of the world. It's certainly better than desoldering a board, definitely. But I'm a little nervous that this is not gonna be as stable of a, a feature as I was hoping. Okay, there's two more here. Boy, yeah, right at the, at the tail end of the total number of holdites I bought too, so this was... Okay, see this one is only labeled 1.25. It does not have a 1.5 label, but I know it supports 1.5, so that's sort of what was making me nervous, but it's okay, because it's definitely to the left. All right. Okay. One more here. And then I just need to test a function key and a short space to make sure I put those in the right spot. And then it's that, that one key um, and praying, basically. Just praying for this all not to have been a waste of time. I looked at the wrong place. I just looked over there as if a camera is over there. Oh, too far. Oh. Wait, they both fell out when I did that? How does that make any sense? Where'd you go? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm gonna end up finding hold tights all over my desk and floor for the next few days, just from how many I've shot across the room. Come on, you bastard, go in there. I can't imagine if this is as if this is as frustrating for me doing it. I can't imagine what it feels like to watch it. I apologize. All right, I'm gonna have to put one of those uh, timestamp markers at the bottom in the comments on this video saying skip from zero to. 184 minutes for the actual part where I put the keyboard together just because of how long this is taking. I appreciate uh, you sticking around to watch this nonsense. All right, I need a, I need a caps lock, non-stepped caps lock uh, to verify the position of that. Where are you? Probably the problem is I ordered every single Oblivion option here and I've got four million separate packages, Jesus Christ. Okay, that's alphas. Oh, and, and the downside of them being in, labeled for, uh, <laughs> labeled for, okay, here's, here's some standard labels. The labeled for Git was that I couldn't tell uh, which one's supposed to be tabbing it. Didn't want to have to dig them out and start looking at their sizes. Let me just see uh, caps lock, please. All right, I think that's it because that's one five, right? Or one point. Yes. Not one. Uh, what is this? It's not one five. This is one seven five. Is that what it is? One seven five. I think it's one seven five. Okay, and we're just gonna make sure we put it in the right one here. Definitely not that position. Okay, to the right. I should know that, but. I always, I'm always nervous I'm gonna put it in the stepped position. In hindsight, building this board with a stepped caps lock was a huge mistake. Because if you like SA key sets, not all SA key sets come with stepped, but these days they do. But I bought a lot of SA key sets in the beginning when I got into the hobby on mech market. And if you buy stuff on mech market, you often get a random you, you miss, key, step, stepped caps lock is one of the harder keys to make sure you get. So it became very difficult to properly 
cap this board with SA keycaps because of that, which is unfortunate. All right, will this stay in here? I don't think so. Because this one has a, yeah. That one's also going to need to be soldered. Okay, so that's two. It's two that need soldering. Let's just check how many more of these. So that one needs soldering, that's done. Okay, first row, done. Done. Needs soldering, otherwise done. Uh, that shift, okay. That was the one I needed to check. Okay, this I need to check. Uh, let's see, we need a short shift, which actually, you know, it'd be faster, honestly, instead of digging through, it'd be faster for me to take my short shift and my key off of the keyboard that's sitting right in front of me, because I know they're sized correctly. That way I don't have to dig through. Yeah, let's put these on switches. And then just confirm the placement here. So I think that it's the outer spot there and the middle spot here. And okay, it's definitely the outer spot here. That one's safe, it does not need soldering. I think it's gonna be two, two pads total on the whole keyboard that needs soldering. Solder the pads in, I think. And if that's the case, it's not so bad. Did I get these hold tights from Zeal? No, I bought these, <laughs> uh, I bought these hold tights direct from Mouser Electronics because I'm a psychopath. Um, I actually bought these hold tights at, oh, like a year and a half ago. Um, oops, before uh, some buys went around. So, I ended up just looking up where people were getting them and just bought them from the wholesale place directly, which is silly, because uh, they were a little more expensive that way. Um, since then, there have been several group buys for hold tights, but also the hold tight thing seems to be waning a little bit, I think partially because it's a fucking pain in the ass, um, also because of um, compatibility issues, uh, but also a lot of manufacturers are making keyboards with uh, hold tight functionality built in. In input clubs, clubs doing it. Pretty sure Rama's new M60 is going to do it, um, if I remember correctly. Uh, and obviously, if you do them at the manufacturing stage, you can do them the better way, so they're not just, uh, let's just here. they're not just um, mark that. They're not just uh, uh, these little hold tights. They're actually like you know a socket that's designed specifically to have reusable switches put into it. It's a safer, better situation to to use, to, to do than this. So I can see why people don't do this. I don't foresee myself ever doing this again, because this sucks. Uh, especially since I don't really trust this is gonna work long term. It'll be fun to have done it and know what it entails. And then to never do it again. But anyway, I, I bought them directly through Mouser. Um, you can just specify a number of parts. Uh, kill new uh, hop swap, hop, hot swap thing. Yeah, I, I thought I saw something related to that. Is that what they're using on like the input club and stuff? Is that, uh, I don't know how you pronounce that word. Is it keel, kale, kale? I always say kale. Um, is that a kale thing? If I had my K-type out here, I could show what I'm talking about. It's like a, it's not simply a like a, a tighter hole for the switch. It's like it's got like two parts to it. Um, it's hard to describe, and uh, it works really well. It c creates a very tight uh, grip on the switch as well, whereas this doesn't. So um, there's a benefit there. Okay, so let's see. Just making sure I got everything but that. So those ones are done. I accidentally put one extra in, but it doesn't matter because no switch will ever touch it. Um, although, let's just take it out just in case. Well, I actually don't know that I can. Well, let's just try. I should be able to just push it through. There we go. So I don't think this would short anything. 
Well, I can't get it out. It's kind of hilarious that I can't get that one out, but that other ones fell out. <laughs> like I want this one to come out and I can't get it, so I'm gonna leave it. I don't think it should bridge anything because there's no actual item in it that's causing the, it to bridge, so it should be fine. Um, is that hot, is, is the KO hot swap thing, is, is that something you, do they sell that to like end users? Can you buy it and then solder that into the board? Or is that something you have to do at a manufacturing level? Like I actually don't know how that thing works. I, my assumption is it could just be, let's see if we can push this back out. My assumption is you could just, oh my God. Ouch, that hurt. That worked though. Uh, oh, you did, okay. <laughs> yeah, agreed. How do you like the Zephyr? Zephyr is very, very pretty. Um, I, I almost went in on it and I didn't because some reason. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what it was. I think it has to do with the fact that it does, it's wind keyless, right? The Zephyr, like on the left side, it's a two key. You can only have two 1.5s on the left and it's seven U space, if I remember. Um, I think that was why I didn't choose the Zephyr. Um, because I switched my, uh, yes, okay, yeah. That was, that. unfortunately for me, not being able to have at least three keys on the left is a deal breaker because I use my um, keyboards with both a PC and a Mac, and on a Mac you just, you need all three. At least on one side you need all three, but primarily I use my left hand for the primary corded um, modifier keys, so not having control, alt, and uh, meta on the left is a problem. Control, command, I should say. Um, I also use the Windows key on Windows. I know a lot of people don't, um, so I am fine with having it, but that part I could take or leave, but the, on Mac, I'm stuck. Um, I also find, uh, I have one, uh, one board. Yeah, I only have one board. The Tina C, actually, I think is the only board I have as a 7U space bar, and I actually don't like it so much. That space is too big. Um, it's louder, it's bigger. I don't I don't think a space bar needs to be that big. But um, the aesthetics of the Zephyr were pretty dramatic. And I've been seeing uh, photos of it, of builds, and it looks really, really nice. Zeal uh, has a good eye and is, uh, has a lot of attention to detail, so it does not surprise me that it is high quality. Um, it's very cool. If he ever does another version of it, uh, or or another keyboard. Like I have a, a two Zeal 60s, Zeal 60 uh, RGB PCBs. Um, actually one of my, I think my third or third build maybe, fourth build was a Zeal PCB. Uh, and it's it's absolutely gorgeous. It has like purple solder mask, uh, really nice typography. Uh, it's really well designed. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that five millimeter plate thing, which I, it's, it, uh, Types great using 67G, okay, cool. Yeah, five millimeter play thing is bizarre. It's an interesting idea. Do you feel like it, does it make the sound deeper? All right, I think that's it of the ones that I can do. I gotta solder these other two. Okay, it's just the one that needs to be soldered. So I'm gonna give it a shot. Turn this thing on. We're gonna try this by putting a hole tight on the switch, putting the switch into position and soldering. Oh, my kids are home. I can hear my dog flipping out. She's such a good dog. She's so quiet the whole day. Then the minute she hears that somebody's in the driveway, it's a flip out time. All right. Just quieter as the plate absorbs most of it. Oh, that's cool, that's cool. I remember when he first uh, said that it was gonna be five millimeter, people were pretty, uh, seemed at the time at least, pretty down on the idea that it wouldn't work or that it was silly or whatever, but I don't know. That guy doesn't really, that guy doesn't really do silly. You know, he seems to be pretty thoughtful. So it, it seemed like at least he had a good, he, had, he probably tested it and had a pretty solid idea in mind, so. The benefit of the doubt was probably worth giving him there. All right, I'm gonna try soldering this now. Whoops, I just, let's see how this goes. Wait, it's really not, this is a little odd. I 
Okay, come on. Well, that actually couldn't have gone better in the sense that that just wrapped right around the hole tight in a way that seems like it will hold. I'm gonna try to put a little solder on the other side. The question is whether or not I'm gonna be able to get the switch out of it. Um, oh, the M60 has a five millimeter plate, interesting, okay. That's cool. Oh wait, did Wilba design, did Wilba design both PCBs? I think he did actually. So that actually makes sense that there's some cross pollination of, an, of ideas there. I have nothing to stick to on the other side, so this is not really useful. So, let's see if I can pull the switch out. I can, and the whole tight did not come off. Now, I'm gonna do something stupid, which I shouldn't do. I'm gonna poke it, put a little pressure on it. And I think what's gonna happen is it's gonna snap right off, but I'm gonna try. Nah, man, that's holding. That's definitely holding. I'm gonna put a little extra solder on the outside of it. I think this will totally solve the problem. Yeah, that'll totally work. That's so cool. Let's, I, I actually should test to make sure it actually, it actually works. Yes, okay, yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, I thought I remembered that Wilbo was doing both. The M60's integrated plates case, right, right, right. And the M60 has a daughter board too, which is interesting. I think that'll hold. Hopefully that'll hold and not short or bridge somehow in a way that I'm not imagining. Did I not, so the one downside is I couldn't control where the hole tight went in that one, so the hole tight's not as deep, but it's not affecting the switch placement, so it should be fine. I'm just gonna test this real quick. Let's see if I can press that button. And it works. Oh, totally works. Good stuff, and it's not loose, and I can pull it out, and the whole tight stays. That is great. Thought I heard somebody call my name, okay. That's great. Awesome. Okay, so that that hack, that still work. That hack to get that to work totally solved it, and that means I can do it for the one other position on the board that has that problem, which was where, what key was it? Oh, the caps lock, okay. So again, just put a hole tight on. What uh, what kind of caps did you put on the Zephyr? Oh, there's actually more of a pad here to solder to, thankfully, so this one I think will even be easier. Famous last words. Let's give it a shot. Come here. too much solder there. Okay. All right, kind of go, got to go a little overboard get it to hold. Let's see. Hmm. Uh-oh. Ah, oh, shoot. This is what I was afraid of. Okay. So now, that's what I was afraid of the first time it didn't happen. 
which is that I've caused the hold tight to not be able to relax enough to let the switch out. Okay, there we go. Just a little reduction. I say Abyss, nice. I have a Abyss on a keyboard I built just the other day. I like them. Uh, my biggest problem with SA Abyss was that, whoops, was that uh, I think they were made by Signature Plastic, Signature Plastics, I thought, but I noticed that that set, maybe did yours have this? It has a lot of cracks in it. Not like full on cracks, but it has like that classic, um, uh, I forget what the word for that is, where the mold mixing is, you can see like some fractures and stuff in it. And I remember somebody asking me when I first posted a photo of of it, they said, hey, does yours have this thing mine has? And I was like, no, I don't think so. And then I actually looked at it and was like, oh yeah, it actually totally does. Now maybe I've just ruined them for you, sorry. But they were a little, they were a little closer to an, um, Max Keys in their plastic quality, which they said it was signature plastics, but it's possible those were actually Max Key, I'm not sure. Maybe not, I don't know. It just, it has a little bit of a, a little bit of a plastic sort of like oddities in it. Um, but I love the color set. A lot of people say that that uh, they prefer um, Calm Depths, but I have Calm Depths and I actually think SA Abyss color set is a little bit better. Um, the only difference is I wish I could get SA Abyss inversed. I guess inverse would just be Calm Depths. I, there's something about some of the tones they are just, I don't know. All right, I think that's it. I think this is a working keyboard now. I should test this uh, this control key or caps lock key. Just make sure it works. Keyboard viewer, come here. All right, here we go. Oh, well, I didn't put a switch in there. Truthfully, of all the switches to fail, the left control totally works. Totally works. Cool. Okay. All set. Well, that's it, the hold tights are in. Now, whether or not they will require adjustments, I have a feeling. Whether or not they will require new ones being put in, I also have a feeling that will happen. But, in general, right now, they work. I dropped a lot of stuff today. So, I put these caps back on my other board. Done. Um, it's kind of goofy to end it here because now would be the fun part. But I need to pause uh, the stream for a bit uh, and go see my children and do kid stuff. And then I will probably come back tonight around 9.30 Pacific and I will actually put the board together um, and put all the switches in, actually get it together and see if when it's all together, it works. Because uh, there's no guarantee it will. Um, so far, it seems like it will. I'm a little nervous because the hold tights are popping out quite a bit. Um, so here's hoping. But um, thanks for watching, and yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll come back in a few hours specific time and uh, try to finish this board up and get some caps on it and get the plate together and see if it functions as a keyboard when it's all done. I'm also gonna put some craft foam in the base of the clip to make it as quiet as I possibly can. So we'll do that. This Destiny Ghost has been sitting here the whole time for no good reason. Um, put that over here. So thanks, um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.